Wait on the Lord. Yes, today we're going to go over a little lesson about how we need to learn to wait on the Lord. Sometimes being still and waiting is exactly what we need to be doing. Not every situation requires busy work. Unfortunately, we equate being busy, moving around uh, with, with actually being productive. And that is not always the case. We're going to look today at three different scriptures. That's going to kind of give us an idea that sometimes God just wants us to be still and to wait on him. So let's get right into it. We're going to look at Exodus 14 and 14. Here it says, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me I don't have to pick up my sword and fight for this? You mean to tell me I don't have to uh, get a strategy together to come against my enemy with this one? He said, you only need to be still. Sometimes, as I said a minute ago, we're so busy running around doing things. And guess what? We're not giving God a chance to work. We're not giving him a chance to work it out. And his way is always above and better than ours. So let's not be so quick to jump, to fight. Some battles are not even ours. Some battles are the Lord's. The word tells us that. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. So why are we trying to fight a battle that we're not supposed to be fighting? Let's just learn to do what he says, to be still. And now let's move on. And then we're going to uh, go to our next scripture here. And looking at Ruth 3, 18 says, Then Naomi said, Wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens. Doesn't it sound like the advice someone should be giving us sometimes? We're ready to run off. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know uh, what we're running into. And a lot of times we don't know what we're running away from. In this situation, if you know the story of Ruth, you know that God had uh, was orchestrating things so that Ruth and Naomi would be taken care of after their husband's death. He was orchestrating things so that Boaz, a rich man, a wealthy man, a good man, would be able to take care of Ruth and Naomi. Now, had Ruth gone off and done things in Ruth's style, the way sometimes we would do things, not knowing what's going to happen, she may have messed up the whole situation. But we need to remember that all things work for the good of those that love the Lord and that he already has a plan for us. And so with uh, Naomi giving Ruth this great advice. Wait, wait to see what happens. God was able to work things out. Boaz set aside, he had his, his servants to set aside a portion of his land so that Ruth could glean or pick the fruits and the vegetables and the food that her and Naomi would need to sustain themselves. Had she not waited and, and been patient with the Lord working things out, it may not have uh, ended in the way that God had planned it. And as we know, the story goes on that Boaz married Ruth. And so her and Naomi were taken care of. So we want to make sure that we are not... Uh, basically messing things up when God has a plan for us already. You know, his ways are above our ways. His thoughts are, oh, his thoughts are so much uh, higher and so much above what we can think. So how about we learn to wait on him, wait to see what happens, wait to see what he wants to do. And so we're going to go ahead to our next verse. So now we're looking at Psalms 37 and 7. It says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways when they carry out their wicked schemes. Yeah, I know. I've done it too. You compare yourself to other people and you see that they are, seem to be moving ahead in life. They seem to have everything together. 
things seem to be coming uh, to them left and right. And you're wondering, well, Lord, I'm serving you. Why aren't they working out for me? But guess what? Those people who come about their um, what they would consider a blessing. They're not true blessings. And that wickedness is going to catch up with them. And God does not want us snared in that trap. Don't compare yourself to others. You don't know what's ahead for them. You don't know what how they're going to have to pay for their wicked ways of, of getting the things that they want now. But let's just wait on God. Let's wait on him. He has plans for us. He wants to prosper us. He wants us to prosper and be in health even as our souls prosper. He has a plan for us. So let's just be still, find out what that plan is. And I want to go back to that first sentence, be still before the Lord. Now, a lot of times we take that word wait and we think we're doing absolutely nothing. And that's not totally true. That's not totally true. What we are doing is praying, fasting, talking with the Lord in prayer, listening to him, seeking him for answers, seeking him for advice. And we're waiting before him for him to let us know what we should and what we should not do. So let's just make sure that what we come by, we're coming by it honestly and not trying to make things work out by doing wicked deeds or in wicked schemes like some people uh, that the scripture is talking about. Because when God works it out, he's going to work it out for you. And when he blesses you, it's going to add no sorrow. There, there's going to be nothing negative about it. So let's just wait on the Lord. So if you have liked um, or enjoyed what you've heard today, maybe you learned something or maybe you just uh, it was just a refresher for you. Whatever the case is, if you got some value out of it, I'm asking you today to help this channel grow and help me to spread God's word. Please like, share and subscribe on today. Thank you. Bye.